Oh god, where is it? I didn't look. Oh my and we got a savior! <laughs> Uh, that doobie was pretty darn easy, I have to say. So as you all know, Trickster is not in the best place in the game. And in fact, GGG knows this very well, and we have an upcoming, hopefully, full Trickster revamp. Trickster is one of my favorite ascendancies in the entire game. And in fact, my character that has my name from way back in the day is a trickster. This was an ED Contagion trickster, I believe, way back in Legion League when it used to have the old Contagion AoE scaling. You could pop a whole Legion instantly. It was really strong and really fun to play. Between the changes of putting Ghost Dance on the tree, taking arguably his most powerful node, his most identifiable node that really part of his character, putting it on the tree and giving him Heartstopper, in, uh, in replacement here, he's been in a pretty rough place, especially with ED Contagion kind of being in a pretty bad place as well with all of the nerfs to AoE scaling, where you may as well play Bane. Not many people are playing Trickster at all. So with the upcoming full rework, I kind of want to revisit him a little bit before the rework, kind of lay the mental groundwork for myself here for understanding the way he is right now, which will make me better able to understand the rework, especially if they keep some of the current nodes right now that might be underused give them a big buff, maybe help me reevaluate and better be able to look at the rework, but also just to kind of like nostalgically re revisit him a little bit in his not so good state. And maybe there was something we could kind of play around with here and maybe have like a little bit of a prototype that's something a little interesting, maybe get some of the creative juices going in your heads as well. So when we all see those patch notes together on Thursday, you know, we'll be able to diff the previous version with the new version. Maybe we'll identify something pretty interesting when we see the changes. So this idea happened by me hanging out with a friend on Discord the other night. He's always all about trying to find kind of quirky, weird builds. He found a trickster that was doing a lot of damage conversion, building a lot around Seismic Trap, even using Lightning Tendrils, and using Harness the Void here. Two days ago, I put together that build. I didn't really like the overall feel of the build. It felt beyond clunky, but there's a lot of really, really clever, interesting ideas in here that I want to go over that inspired me to really just build into Blade Vortex and actually made something that hits really, really hard and is playable if you want to play it. So the concept behind this build is we are building around Harness the Void. So this is a very, very powerful node if you build all the way into it. What it says is there is a percent chance to gain some non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. And each one of those procs independently for each damage type. So I made a little bit of an illustration here. So what happens is in this instance with this build, we're starting off with Blade Vortex doing pure fizz damage. Then we are converting Blade Vortex to both lightning and cold. We are using things like Hatred and Taste of Hate, which goes fizz directly to cold. But we're also doing fizz as lightning with things like this mastery here, which is converting some of that. But what's really special is something like fizz as extra will actually do that before the fizz is converted into lightning. So you're still getting that full benefit there. So what's happening is we're taking the fizz, converting to lightning with the mastery, but we're also converting to cold with something like Taste of Hate and Hatred. But then lightning in addition is then being converted to cold as well. And then for each one of these damage types, Harness the Void is doing three independent rolls for non-chaos as chaos. So it's taking all three of these and then converting them down. If there was a very efficient way to then also convert to fire at the end without giving up any damage, that would give us even more value. But we're already kind of like converting and trickling down a little bit here where we don't really get too much as extra with like a cold to fire jewel. So yeah, this is the basic concept is we're using a cane of Coolamac here with Blade Vortex and we're pushing the damage as high as possible, the gem levels as high as possible. We're also using Anomalous Fizz to Lightning to convert even more Fizz to Lightning, which will then convert to Cold, and we're getting all of that as extra non-chaos to chaos, all of those rolls as it's going down the line. With Double Call the Brotherhoods, we have 96% of Lightning converted to Cold damage, but remember, before the conversion, we're also getting the non-chaos as chaos, so it's, it's totally okay. If we were able to do full 100% conversion down the line, with Fizz to Lightning to Cold to Fire, we would actually get that full pull 
on the non-chaos to chaos from Harvest of the Void as it's going down, down the line. In addition to that, we're using Arn's Anguish, which is a cool little belt, which is a great way if you wanna like push your damage up, if you're able to get more endurance charges. What it says is it converts your endurance charges to brutal charges. I currently max out at six brutal charges, which gives me an 18% chance to deal triple damage, which is obviously really, really good. Using a pair of Skyforce here with a corrupted plus one max endurance charges. This was uh, one exalt in standard. It's kind of like how, how far have the mighty fallen? This just gives us more mana reservation. This gives us power charges for free. This is really just a fun prototype to show off what is possible by looking into something that maybe you haven't built around before. I never built around Harness the Void until two days ago, and I've always wanted to. It's a really neat node, but as you can see, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of pieces that you have to put together. To go further down the line, we are using Shavs, so we can go low life, reserve more auras. As you can see, I have very, very low energy shield. I have negative 60 chaos res. This is just, hey, how far can we push the damage? And in fact, as you can see, we are at 25.4 million DPS. We could cut the damage in half probably focus on quality of life. But when I'm working my builds, I'll either go all defense or all offense first, see if I can like proof of concept, get to a place where I'm comfortable, and then I'll work on the other side to kind of round it out. We're using ashes just for, you know, free more reservation. So we don't have to worry about that. And then I have this pair of face breakers that I bought for one exalt in standard as well, gives us despair on hit and base spell crit, which is really, really great. And then we're using Herald of Purity, Wrath, Hatred, Discipline, and Zealotry. And then for our damage links, we have Blade Vortex, uh, Anomalous Fizz to Lightning. This just gives us even more damage conversion, which is great. Awakened Unleash, Increased Critical Damage, Increased Critical Strikes, and Anim Power. And then we have a really, really nice Cane of Coolmac here, which gives us level of socketed support gems, quality to socketed support gems, more damage, non-chaos is extra chaos, which is what we're trying to scale, and then chance to deal double damage. And then for the flasks, there's some really clever stuff here. So the basic thing is, remember, we're doing non-chaos as chaos. We have an Adzeri's Promise, gives us Elemental as extra chaos, Gain Fizz as extra chaos, Taste of Hate, Fizz as extra cold, which helps us have a better roll on the Harness the Void for the cold conversion. And then the really cool thing here is we're using the Elixir of the Unbroken Circle. This is a really clever little interaction. Since Arms Anguish is converting Endurance Charges into Brutal Charges, right? They're not actually Endurance Charges. We can use the Elixir of the Unbroken Circle here, which says gain one Endurance Charge per second during Flask Effect. However, lose all Endurance Charges on use. We don't have Endurance Charges. We have Brutal Charges. So we can spam this elixir of the unbroken circle and we get full uptime on our brutal charges. And when we use it again, it doesn't remove our brutal charges. It only removes endurance charges. So it's a clever way that you can just get those charges up. You don't have to worry about it. And then as you saw, it's lasting 20 seconds because we are using the charge mastery here. So there's really, really good uptime on that. In addition, we have a pretty crazy watcher's eye. Gain fizz is extra lightning while affected by wrath and then some critical strike chance, but while affected by hatred. Um, we're power charge stacking with inner conviction with a dominus militant faith. And then we have two large cluster jewels here that are just pushing our fizz damage as high as possible. That's the initial damage of blade vortex before all of the conversions down the line. The easiest way to scale all of the damage in this build since the beginning of the funnel is that fizz damage of blade vortex is just, you know, if I could have rings that had increased fizz damage on the implicits, anything like that, that would be the best way to scale it. But yeah, my tree is totally scuffed. This is just like whatever. And really the whole idea here is just to show you guys something kind of fun, a little bit different. Trickster can be played right now. This was a couple weeks ago, honestly. I probably would try to turn this into a real build that I would make a build guide for and recommend because it's just so different. This is not really a full build concept. This is not, uh, you know, it's not a real build. I could fall over and just die walking into any pack of monsters here. But the damage is like, really, really good, right? 25 million DPS, we could cut that in half, focus on some more quality of life, trying to make something that is actually worth playing. As I continue on my mission here of just sharing build ideas with you guys, sharing with you the concepts and the thought process that goes into like that, the messy way that builds can be put together. You know, it's not all just POB and math and all that type of stuff. At least for me, there's a lot of testing, there's a lot of experimentation. Uh, you know, this represents a culmination of like, eight or nine hours of putting a build together and testing on, on stream, I think. And it, I would even call it just like half done, right? We haven't worked on the defense or anything like that. So yeah, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna drop Herald of Ice, I'm gonna put Zealotry on, and this is where the clunkiness gets in, is I wanna hit my flasks, charge up my Blade Vortex, do Vol Blade Vortex, and then Withering Step afterwards. So then I can wither the, the Minotaur and do some bonus damage here. So there's a, there's a lot of pieces that go into this. Hopefully he doesn't go underground, but 
There we go. So as you can see, it's like, it's good damage. And there is the framework and the idea for something that could actually be turned into like a really, really good build. I did play around with Bladefall. I did play around with EK a little bit. There's a lot of other options. But as we all know, BV is basically like the big way that you can really scale a lot of Fizz damage as a spell. So yeah, I just thought this was a really cool thing before we get to the patch notes, before we see the full change. This is a node that really I don't think gets too much love. I think it's one of the least picked nodes on Trickster of all time. And I just thought this was really neat and I wanna share with you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go get ready for the stream where we're gonna play around with a Hydrosphere Inquisitor, I think. Trying to do some more meme -y ideas that can kind of just like get those juices flowing before the patch notes. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.